Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Pac-12 basketball preview along with the former Stanford point guard Drew Schiller. Roxy Bernstein with you after another exciting week of Pac-12 hoops and some hardware again to give out. Pac-12 Player of the Week, Terrence Ross from the Washington Huskies and Drew in the rivalry game, the Apple Cup Part 1 in Seattle. He had a tremendous second half against the Cougars. 26 of his career high, 30 points in the second half. Also had a career high 14 rebounds and they really needed him. They were down by 10 points in the second half. They were playing without C.J. Wilcox so he really stepped up and showed why a lot of people think that if he leaves uh, he'll be a first round pick in the 2012 NBA draft. In that ball game, as you mentioned, the Huskies came from 10 down. He really was the catalyst in emotions after Lorenzo Romar got a technical foul there in the second half. The Huskies just took off. Well, sometimes you'll see coaches call, uh, you know, get called for a technical foul and really inspire their team to rally behind them. And Terrence Ross just said, look, I'm going to lead my team to victory here without C.J. Wilcox. As we mentioned, they really needed someone to step up and, uh, and fill that scoring void. So as we take a look at the Pac-12 standings through three weeks of conference action, Cal and Stanford tied atop the Pac-12 conference, Washington just a half game back. But what about the Oregon Ducks, Drew? They're coming off a sensational weekend, just their second road sweep in Arizona. 34 years that they swept, they won at Arizona State and at Arizona. Well, Oregon's now 4-2 and two in conference, and three of their four conference wins are on the road. So they have shown that they can really go away from Matthew Knight Arena and get those wins. And a very balanced scoring attack for them in both the wins at Arizona and at Arizona State. They had four guys in double figures in both of those games. They shot over 40% from three as a team. So they're returning home now to Matthew Knight Arena with a chance to, to defend their home court and get to 6-2 and two in league. Colorado with two losses. They came to the Bay Area undefeated in conference play 3-0, but they leave 3-2. and Yeah, and they were 3-0, and and all three of those wins were at home. So their first road trip, uh, it was a very difficult one at that to go to Cal on Thursday night and Stanford on Saturday, and it was a very close game at Cal on Thursday night. The fact that Cal was able to overcome Jorge Gutierrez, Alan Crabb, and Justin Cobbs combining for 7 for 35 from the floor and get that win over Colorado, it was a huge win for the Bears. Well, speaking of California, Drew, they hit the road up to the Northwest and they'll battle the Huskies in Seattle at 5.30 tip Pacific time on Root Sports Northwest Thursday night, Cal at Washington and a big showdown in Seattle. Five and one Cal at four and one Washington. Cal coming off the home sweep of Colorado in Utah and Cal against Utah on Saturday with 24 assists. It's not quite the 28 assists that they had a couple weeks back against UCLA, but when they're sharing the ball and they're playing together, they are extremely difficult to beat. And speaking of difficult to beat, how hard is it to win in Seattle at Alaska Airlines Arena? Oh, it's very difficult. The only team that has done it this year is South Dakota State, and Washington really feeds off that home crowd. It gets very loud in there. It's kind of an overdose of purple. It's a, <laughs> it's a very difficult place to win, and Washington really needs to defend their home court this week because they have a chance. If they can knock off Cal and Stanford, they could be 6-1 and one and alone in first place. Then coming up at 7.30 Pacific time from Corvallis at Gill Coliseum, Oregon State hosting UCLA in a national broadcast on FSN. And Oregon State limping a bit home. They, they need some good home cooking right now. And UCLA has some momentum heading into this matchup. Yeah, I mean, that loss, that quadruple overtime loss to Stanford, I think really took a lot out of Oregon State. They go on the road and they lose another overtime game to Arizona on Thursday. And then they lose at Arizona State on Saturday. They play much better at home, however. And they're leading the conference and scoring at 81 points per game in conference play. But they're going to be facing a UCLA team that's on a three-game winning streak. They're playing much better basketball right now after losing the first two conference games to Stanford and Cal. And during that three-game winning streak, they're holding opponents to just under 40% field goal percentage, which is more typical of the Ben Howland teams that we saw 2006, 2007, 2008 when they went to three straight Final Fours. Well, let's jump ahead to Saturday. Speaking of UCLA, they're in action again in the Willamette Valley against the Oregon Ducks in Eugene and Matthew Knight Arena. We talked about Oregon before. They're coming off that road sweep in the state of Arizona. UCLA, Oregon, Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock, FSN. Well, UCLA had some very nice bench production in their win at USC last Sunday. Norman Powell came off the bench and played well. Anthony Stover had, was a big presence on the defensive end. Zeke Jones, 15 points and 5 assists against USC. And the Ware Twins, we talked about them last week. Over their last three games, that three-game winning streak, they're combined averaging 30 points per game between those two. So UCLA is playing at a very high level, but a very difficult road trip at Oregon State and then at Oregon on Saturday. Also coming up on Saturday, 3 o'clock Pacific time from Seattle, Stanford visits Washington, a game you can see in Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area, also Root Sports Northwest, 
And after they have to go to Pullman on Thursday, Stanford then travels across the state, goes to Seattle in the big showdown with the Huskies. Oh, it's a difficult road trip. Whenever you have to hop on a plane in between the two games, it was the only road trip in the Pac-12 where you had to do that. Now teams will have to do that with Colorado and Utah. But Stanford is coming off a very uh, impressive performance at home on Saturday against Colorado. They used a big run in the second half to, to really blow that game open. But it wasn't a pretty performance for Stanford from the free throw line in the two games combined against Utah and Colorado. 25 for 48. So Stanford's going to really need to improve on that on the road if they want a chance uh, to leap to 7-1 and one in conference play. And that showdown on Saturday, if Washington knocks off California on Thursday and Stanford beats Washington State, that will be a 6-1 and one Stanford team against a 5-1 and one Washington, team, Washington team on Saturday. Also coming up on Saturday, 3 o'clock Pacific time, 4 o'clock Mountain time in Boulder. Arizona takes on Colorado, a game that can be seen on Fox Sports Arizona as well as Root Sports Rocky Mountain. And a pivotal game for both teams. Coming off the home loss to Oregon, Arizona now having to go out onto the road in Colorado after suffering some road setbacks, trying to turn it around back in their friendly confines. Well, it was a dramatic weekend for Arizona. An overtime win over Oregon State on Thursday. Of course, there was that scuffle that almost got ugly on Thursday night and then on Saturday Arizona was down by 17 against Oregon in the second half they came back and actually had a chance to win it at the end of the game but now they're gonna have to go and they're gonna have to face that high altitude against Utah on Thursday and at Colorado on Saturday and Colorado they're gonna be Arizona's gonna be facing an angry team that just got swept in the Bay Area Colorado looking to defend their home court uh, Carlin Brown, he struggled in the Bay Area. He was the reigning Pac-12 player of the week, but did not have his best performances against uh, Cal and Stanford. So look for Carlin Brown to really try to have a big performance. And here's the rest of the games for this weekend. Starting Thursday night, USC is at Oregon, a game that can be seen on Comcast Sportsnet Northwest. 5.30 tip at Matthew Knight Arena. Arizona State is at Colorado, 6.30 Mountain, 5.30 Pacific on Root Sports Rocky Mountain. Also Thursday night, Arizona is at Utah. A game that tips at 5.30 Pacific, 6.30 Mountain Time on Fox Sports Arizona. And Stanford visits Washington State, tip-off at 7 from Pullman. And then rounding out the Saturday schedule, Arizona State is at Utah. 3 o'clock Mountain Star, 2 o'clock Pacific Time, also at 3 o'clock Pacific. Cal is at Washington State. And rounding out the conference schedule, USC at Oregon State, 7.30 Saturday night at Gill Coliseum in Corvallis, a game that can be seen on Root Sports Northwest and also Prime Ticket in Southern California. Well, there you have it. Should be another exciting week of Pac-12 basketball. Drew, looking forward to another great week. We'll see you here next week. Yeah, looking forward to it. See you all season. That is your Pac-12 basketball preview.